For today's video, we're gonna do a Golden Field CPU cooler shootout, uh, which I'm really excited for. Uh, for those of you that didn't see the video where I discovered the brand Golden Field, go check out that video. I'll have it linked in the description below. It was pretty funny. I went crap hunting on Amazon and found a bunch of their parts. And my main takeaway about Golden Field uh, from that video was that they have interesting design ideas that are just badly implemented. But it, it piqued my interest. So I went back and bought a whole whole bunch of their CPU cooler lineup just to see if that mantra stacks up through their entire product line. So strap in because it's going to be a sea of candy wrapper plastic and crappy RGB. But before we get into that, it's time for today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Ubico, which is a powerful way to secure any online information that you have with a physical two-factor authentication key. Regardless of what device you want to use it with, there will be a YubiKey option for you, be it a laptop or a cell phone. They even have NFC in them, which means you can touch tap 2FA, which is a real good rap name. Yubico also makes it really easy for you to decide which of their big selection of YubiKeys to get. All you need to do is take this quick quiz, which takes into account all of the devices that you have and how you're going to use them, and then suggests the best key for you. The way that I like to use my YubiKey 5C NFC is to secure my password manager, which means that unless somebody has physical access to my YubiKey, they're not going to have access to any of my accounts. Also, if you have a cryptocurrency wallet that you want to make 100% sure nobody's going to hack, a YubiKey may be a very good option for you. So if you want some physical two-factor authentication action, click on the link in the description below. Thank you again, Yubico, for sponsoring today's video. We're gonna kick off the video with a good old unboxing. First off, we're gonna have a look at this cooler, which I used in the original video. Um, it's an easy, it's an easy cooler to unbox, as you can see there. I'm not gonna look at this cooler too much because, well, it was already featured in the previous video where it came in two pieces and I had to glue it back together. So this is kind of like an IKEA cooler, I guess. This one uh, looks quite promising. It is in a tiny box. The temperatures in this comparison are kind of going to be all over the place because we're comparing this tiny cooler to like an all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit like pitting a normal house cat against like Godzilla. Opening this one up, um, it is really tiny. Look at that. It's so small. And as you can see here, it's actually got four copper heat pipes, which is not bad. It makes a Noctua NHL 9 look like a huge cooler. It's so, it's so cute. I love how the fan is thicker than the actual fin stack. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how this is actually gonna run. Uh, when it comes to the actual mounting hardware, it just comes in a little bag like this. It seems relatively straightforward. Interestingly enough, it seems like it's thermal paste actually comes in a little sachet like this. I've never seen thermal paste actually actually given like this. Now let's move over to the next one. This is actually one of the more exciting looking coolers of the bunch. <laughs> it looks like a jet turbine. That's so cool. Uh, so with that, let's, let's get into it. Pop this open. Oh, I mean, it's packaged. It's packaged quite nicely. There's this huge piece of pretty soft foam there. And then we have the cooler, which is way bigger than I was expecting. Look at that thing. <laughs> you know, this is like full on a jet turbine cooler. That actually looks really cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, there is a huge piece of plastic around the outside of it. So I guess that's to funnel air down through the base of the cooler. It does have quite a lot of connectors going on here, which may be quite difficult to hide when installing it. Uh, but you can see here, you've actually got four heat pipes. Um, yeah, this looks like a real beast of a cooler. Next up, we're gonna go with this one, which seems pretty ridiculous. This is actually the first cooler so far that actually comes with plastic wrapping around the box, uh, which would prevent a case like, like the first cooler we looked at. As you can see on the front here, this is a, a very ornate looking cooler, I think is, is, is the proper way to put that. Let's open it up. Okay, so this is a much more traditional CPU cooler box setup. Uh, up here you have all of, the, all of the mounting and stuff, and then there are actual instructions. 
And then we have the cooler in like a foam clam shell. Oh, look at that bad boy. That is, I love how it's actually like the plastic cladding is on both sides. I love how they, they just like block a bunch of the fans like intake and exhaust ability with just a huge piece of unnecessary plastic. In fact, I think unnecessary plastic is a pretty good description of this cooler. This is actually the first one of the lot that looks like it comes with reasonable mounting hardware uh, that kind of makes sense. In fact, this looks suspiciously like they stole it off a of Cooler Master Hyper 212. Like that is, that is Hyper 212 mounting hardware if I've ever seen it. And then finally we have the big boy, the Silver Fox 240G. Sounds a little bit like a granny fiddler name, but it's okay, we'll, we'll look past that. Now, I actually had comments on the previous video where I looked at Goldenfield products, where uh, people said that they actually own this all-in-one liquid cooler, and they're very happy with its reliability and performance so far. So, you know, we've, we, we have some people in the community that use this that are happy with it. That looks like very standard all-in-one packaging. As far as the smell goes, um, it smells like all all-in-one packaging I've ever opened before. I don't know why, but all-in-one packaging always has this very distinct smell to it. It's, it's pretty weird. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty flimsy feeling cooler. So you've got this kind of braided plastic material on the tubing, uh, which feels a bit rough, but it looks quite nice. And then over here, we have the actual pump block, which also, I mean, it's, it's reasonably minimalist. It, it, it looks fine, I guess. We've got a copper contact plate down here. I wonder what OEM this is actually based on, because I can't imagine that Goldenfield designed it themselves. For an all-in-one radiator, the whole unit feels pretty light. Uh, but, you know, this should do a decent job. I think it should be okay. So with that, let's hook up all of these coolers and see what they do. Now let's see how these coolers perform. And I'm gonna be honest with you here, I was expecting just performance wise, like a house fire with like people screaming and like ambulances and fire trucks coming and stuff. And the reason for that was because of this cooler. This cooler is all of the personal experience that I had with Goldenfield coolers in the past. And well, yeah, if you saw that video, you'll know that it didn't perform very well. Like it's not a very good cooler. So I expected all of the other coolers to be terrible. And well, not all of them were. Uh, I think there are some interesting results here. Now, before we look at the results, uh, I just want to talk you through the test system quickly. As far as the CPU goes, we're just using the Ryzen 3 3200G, which it only has four cores running at about 3.8 gigahertz. Like it's not a very heavy load. Um, and we're comparing all of these coolers to the stock Ryzen cooler that comes with the 3200G that looks like this. I may or may not have lost the plastic shroud that goes over it, but that's, that's the benchmark, right? And in terms of performance, with the AMD stock cooler, we were getting 61.5 degrees Celsius with an ambient temperature of about 23.1 degrees Celsius, which is what I'm gonna correct all of the other results to. Now, straight off the bat, the first cooler that I compared it to was the little small blue cooler. I don't actually know what it's called. That tiny little cooler was way better than I was expecting. I mean, okay, it was three degrees hotter than the stock Ryzen cooler, which, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of buying an aftermarket cooler. But I was expecting, like, it just to not be able to handle even the 3200G. Although, bear in mind, it does have a really irritating whine. that it makes. Um, yeah, the sound of that one is, is, is a little bit annoying, but it's not too bad. Now, next up, we're gonna test the Terrible Orb, which was the little IKEA half-broken cooler that I spoke about before. It hits 69 degrees Celsius, which is, that's almost eight degrees more than the stock Ryzen cooler, and it performed quite a bit worse than that tiny blue one. I didn't, like, that doesn't make any sense. That's such a terrible-ass cooler. Uh, next up though, I'm quite excited about this one. It's the jet turbine, which gave us 52.8 degrees Celsius. We almost lost 10 degrees Celsius from this stock cooler, but there's a bit of a problem because it doesn't just look like a jet turbine. It very much sounds like one as well. 
It is a weirdly noisy cooler, like it's so loud. So what I did is I actually turned the fan speed way down to a point where it was just about manageable. And then the temperatures dropped to 55.1 degrees Celsius, which is still not bad. Now the next cooler in the list is the Windwalker, which is that very ornate plastic one with the two tiny fans on it. Now, you have to kind of take the whole thing apart to mount it, and in the process of mounting it, it looks suspiciously like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Like, it really looks like they bought a Cooler Master Hyper 212, reverse engineered it, and then just added a bunch of plastic tat to it with small fans and a bunch of RGB. I'm not saying that they definitely did that, but it just looks so suspiciously similar. Um, so hopefully it'll perform pretty well because that Cooler Master Hyper 212 is a, is a decent cooler. And as far as the performance goes, we were getting 51.1 degrees Celsius, which is the best result we've gotten so far. Um, but there are a couple of issues with it. Uh, those cables that you use for all the RGB, it's, it's a nightmare to deal with. But not only that, it is also very loud. So despite the fact that it has two fans on it, because they're small fans, they, they're just very noisy. Uh, now I've decided that considering that this is essentially just a SUS Hyper 212, I had to compare it to a Hyper 212. So I also ran a Hyper 212 through the test situation and it got exactly the same result. 51.1 C with the exact same ambient temperature. So the results are identical as well, which is even more sus. The only difference is the Hyper 212 is significantly quieter, like way quieter. Because it has a single 120 millimeter fan as opposed to the two 92 mil fans, like, I don't know what their dimensions are, but it is way quieter at the same temperature. So basically what Golden Field has done is they've just made a terrible version of the Hyper 212. Although one big advantage that the Imposter Cooler has is it is quite a lot cheaper than the Hyper 212. Um, and then finally, this is the result that I've been waiting for and it, it also, it, it didn't, it didn't go very well for, for the Granny Fiddler all-in-one. Uh, so, <laughs> with the same ambient temperature as the Hyper 212, we got, uh, 52 degrees Celsius. So it was actually worse. So that means that the Hyper 212 outperformed a 240 millimeter AIO. Now granted, the, the, the Granny Fiddler AIO was very quiet and th there is some headroom left in the cooler. So I think if you've got a, a more powerful CPU, something like a, I don't know, like a 5800X, maybe the AIO would perform a little bit better than the Hyper 212, but still, <laughs> <laughs> that tells you a lot about the quality of the pump and the radiator and all of that in that AIO that it actually was outperformed by like an entry level air cooler. And with that, it brings us to the conclusion. Um, none of these coolers are very good, quite frankly. They're just very plasticky and they, they take form over function but they don't look very good, except for the turbine cooler. I do like the way that looks. Now, having said that, um, most of these coolers performed way better than I was expecting. And I think the reason for that is because I was basing my expectations on this Costco brand arc reactor cooler, which is horrendously bad performing. Like, I mean, it kind of, it kind of doesn't even make sense that it performs as badly as it does. Um, but yeah, so with that, if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Go check out the sponsor, uh, Ubico, in the link in the description below. And until the next video, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.